document the making of a Peter Ron anvil. The hardest part of making this anvil was finding an anvil that was that size. So what I did was I found an anvil, I took cardboard and slapped it up against and drew the, the pattern with the pencil onto the, onto the sheet of cardboard. So I drew all the parts. This, this is uh, made from uh, 24 gauge. With a quarter inch top. So I drew all the pieces out, I cut them out with a scissor, I slapped it down on the sheet I was going to use, I spray painted around the pattern, and I used my plasma to cut the pieces out. And then I just put the pieces together, I started upside down. I started making them on the inside, the side to the top. And, and I make, I just kept making until all the pieces were put together, and then I just put on the bottom. So then, then I took the the make and make on the outside. The reason I made on the inside first was to get enough material to uh, so it was thicker. And if you blow it through, you just take a, use a squirt gun and just fill in. So then I would just ground, ground down, and the patina was. On a day that it wanted to rain but couldn't, I washed it with uh, muriatic acid and let it sit for an hour or two and it looked like a big pumpkin. It got orange like a big pumpkin and then I just oiled it. And that's the making of a... Okay, so now when you talked about all the pieces, uh, did you make the cone as kind of a separate, you know, the horn as kind of some separate pieces? Yeah, I think the horn is... is, is this. This is one piece, this is another piece, this this is probably in three pieces. Okay. And so I was just it was just put together and just it just made up with 24 gauge. The first one I did was an 18 gauge with a 3A stop. This one was a bigger anvil that's actually lighter than the other one. Mm -hmm. But 20 24 gauge and wow. material you'll have. Wow. I did a little higher top so that in case somebody used a hammer, they wouldn't put, put a damp on it. Good. So this is a quarter inch top that can Okay. Thank you. So this is my swipe spot. Paul Paul Hubler used to have a hollow anvil that he brought to all the vents and he sold it at his auction and moved away. So for a Christmas meeting, I made uh, the smaller of the animals, which is about 209 pounds. So then that year, five or six other guild members made an animal. So the next year for a Christmas meeting, I upped the ante by making a swedge block. So what I did was I took the swedge block and I, I laid it down on plastic and I spray painted around it. I moved, I moved the, the swedge block off with a scissor cut out the pattern. And I laid that on top of the sheet. This is probably 18 gauge. So I actually laid it on two sheets. I spray painted around it. And with the plasma, I just cut out, when it was dry, just cut out the pattern. So then, I had some scrap uh, stock. The, the regular swedge block was, a, was about that wide. But I had this stock, so that's what I used. So I just started welding. And, and then I would make the bend so that it, I already had this piece and I needed to match that. So I just made the bend so that it would take and fit. So you'd bend a little bit, you'd weld a little bit, bend a little bit until... What, what gauge material is that stuff that you're bending and welding? This was probably 18 gauge. 18 gauge, okay. 18 gauge. Um, the sides and, and, the, um, and the face are, are the same material, same okay. thickness. Once I'd had three sides done, the fourth side went a lot easier because I kind of, kind of had the process down. But you just, you just, you bend it down in. You know, it's hollow, so you can go down in and tell, and then weld, weld, and then start pulling it up and just keep welding, and and you just. Okay. That again, I try to do the inside first, possibly, but maybe on this, just, just did the outside. I'm not sure. So then it came time to do. Um, the holes. So I had that size tube, all these size tubes, and then I put a bowl swedge in so I didn't have to work as hard because that's all the tubes I had. Um, okay. 
personally, I think a lot of the holes in a smudge block are to make it lighter. Uh, you know, they do, you do some upsetting with them and you can do some banding, but a lot of them I think it's just uh, because on a swedge block, the size you want to use is never going to be the one that's on top. So you got to take and pick it up and move it all the time. And so if this was a solid chunk of cast iron, it would be a lot heavier than I think a lot of them are. That's my personal opinion. I've never, never heard about it. But. Okay. So this was just tubing and I just cut a hole and ah. picked it up. Great. Okay. And nobody else made them. Uh, <laughs> they didn't up the ante and they didn't make the switch box so I didn't have to make a um, 25 pound sledgehammer or anything. So, <laughs> out of 10. Okay. Well, thank you.